life, and it is life-changing. And so we invite you and welcome you, Holy Spirit, to change me by your word. If you dare say that to him, just say, Spirit of God, I invite you to change me by your word today. Mind stay in the room. Ears are open in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. You can be seated this morning. Get out your Bibles, boot them up or open them up, whichever you have, and uh, Open to Luke chapter 8. I'm going to give you a couple of them. Uh, Luke chapter 8, James chapter 1. And uh, I don't know if you have enough fingers or markers in your Bible that you can do three of them. We'll wait for you when, you, when we get there. But Luke 8, James 1, and Galatians 6. All right. We'll, we'll, some of the things will be on the screen. Others, I'm going to ask you to be turning to them. All right. This morning... I kind of felt weird this past week because uh, I have been dealing in the series um, called The Power of Identity, but since May, woo, and it's September, and uh, we ended that, I ended that series last week, and so uh, you can uh, catch up on any of those uh, that you missed. This morning, I'm going to start kind of a... Uh, a mini-series thing uh, called The Truths from the Tree. The Truths from the Tree. And the tree that we're talking about, if you could put that up for me, the tree that we're talking about um, is kind of twofold. It's this tree, which is also the, on the back wall back there. And you know, if you were here in January, we came into January kind of with a, with a, a vision word that God had been speaking uh, revolving around this tree. We had somebody kind of computer animate, draw this tree for us and uh, 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 put this up there. We shared kind of the vision of that in January and then went right into the series called Bear Much Fruit, amen, uh, which is also on YouTube. Uh, but this tree, let me, let me just, read. I know it's small for you today, but let me just read to you the verses that are at the top of the tree, the bottom of the tree, and they're on the back wall back there. Uh, the top says, is 90, Psalm 92, 12 and 13. It says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, and those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, amen, shall flourish in the courts of our God. That's up there in the fruit. And we dealt, again, in that series, Bear Much Fruit. Down at the bottom, uh, Colossians chapter 2, 6 and 7. And now, listen to what it says. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness let your roots go down deep by the way this is we we've really been focusing on this this year especially i shared with you kind of a a word i felt like god was really putting on my heart urgently, and it, and it went like this, equip, equip, prepare, prepare, secure, secure. And just as a pastor, I feel like just a sense of urgency that the Spirit of God is saying that over the body of Christ because wind is coming. The Bible tells us in the last days will be what? Perilous times. And so the body of Christ, if, if there is no root system, if our roots do not go down deep into Christ, and if we are not building our lives on him, when the wind comes, when trouble comes, it will blow us over. But if our roots are deep, come on, say deep. Now that takes effort. That's what we have been doing in the equipping, in the life courses, in, in life in the word studies, studying the word of God. Well, that's what we've been doing with the identity series. It's causing our roots to go down deep. And if you and I, have, if we've been engaging in that, then, then the roots are, 
are going deep. We're building on Christ. And so when wind blows, it will not blow us over. Listen, the desire of God is that his church, which is you and I, by the way, his desire for you, his will for you and I, is that we would be able to stand. Amen. That we would be able to stand steadfast and immovable. Let me read you a verse, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, is 57 and 58. It says this, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and immovable. Let me say that again. Be steadfast and immovable immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. How can we be steadfast and immovable? Our roots go down deep into him. You want to know how we can be steadfast and immovable? Because our identity is in Christ. Amen. And so that, that's where this comes from. It is his desire that you and I, even in the culture we live in, how many of you sometimes get really tired when you focus too much on what's going on in culture? Have you ever just been kind of seeing it and seeing it and then just kind of like, oh, my word. And if we are not careful, we can become consumed with the distractions of culture. And we can, we can end up, if we're not careful, if our eyes are not fixed on Jesus, you can actually begin to lose hope in the culture we live in. Like, my goodness, where is this headed? What's that? Listen, there's always hope because of Jesus. Amen. So we got to have our roots down deep into him, building on him, eyes fixed on him, so that in the, in the day that we live, when the wind is blowing and trouble is all around, that the body of Christ, that we are not blown to the left and to the right. We are not blown and toppled over. Amen. His will for your life is to, to build strength and stability. I love that word, stability. Woo. Nobody likes instability. Amen. So we've got Christ. That's where our stability comes from. His desire, his plan for you and I is deep roots, strong roots. His desire, his plan for your life is that we should and we would bear fruit. And fruit that would last. Remember, we dealt through all of that. That's his will for our life. Now listen. Growing in Christ, bearing fruit, roots going down deep, it does not happen on its own. Amen. Just because we are another year older in Christ does not mean we, are, we, are, we have grown and matured in Christ. Uh, listen, come on, are we aware that you and I can sit in church and hear a thousand sermons over our life and never grow? Because if we do not apply the word of God, if we do not live the word of God, if we do not put it into practice, it doesn't produce anything. We just went to church. And maybe we had fun going to church and maybe we feel better about ourselves because we went to church and we think God sees us better because we went to church. But listen, it's, all, it's about doing, it's about growing, it's about applying the word of God, amen, and then we will grow. We always do this at the, the beginning of the year. Uh, you know, we came into 2019 and we always look back and say, where was I spiritually last year at this time? If I am going to bear fruit in 2019, because that's the will of God, that we would bear fruit, amen, not just some fruit, but much fruit, remember the word says, that we would bear, if I'm going to bear fruit, that means change, that I would be different. I, I will have matured in Christ before 2019 is over. Listen, the only way that is going to happen is that you and I are applying ourselves throughout 2019, because when we get to the end of it, it does not automatically mean you and I are more mature in Christ. Amen. Listen, the year is not over. Praise God. It's not too late. Amen. Come on, you can dig in and apply yourself and say, okay, I've kind of let that all slide. The summer kind of all slid. And here we are in September. 
the last day of summer. Come on, today is the official last day of summer. And it is stinking hot out there. Appropriately so, but tomorrow, baby, it is fall. I think it's going to be 69. Woo! I love it. I love it. But when you get to January 1st, 2020, and you look back and say, have I grown this year? That, that, that answer all depends on what you are doing right now. Let me, let me get more specific. It has everything to do with what you will do today with the seed of the Word of God. So it is His will that we bear fruit, that we grow, that He is changing us. It takes effort. It takes deliberate action. You've got your Bibles open or booted to Luke chapter 8. Go there, Luke chapter 8. And we are going to uh, slip into the parable of the sower. And uh, I said this, this little series is called Truths from the Tree. And yes, it's that tree there. But it's also those little apple trees out there in our yard. And uh, you see this beautiful apple? This thing is from one of those little miniature trees out there. And... Uh, um, God has, it's kind of a weird thing. I, just, I don't know if this happens to you, but in your everyday life, does God take like little things you are involved in and like speak to you out of those little things? And uh, out here messing with these trees, man, it is like, it is like God just kind of highlighting little spiritual truths and say, so we're dealing with something with the tree and, and Spirit of God is just like, that's kind of like this in the kingdom and just kind of speaking into your life over stuff. I'm going to share some of those with you that I have, have kind of gleaned from the Spirit of God, things that, that I knew and all of that, but as we've been growing these apples out here, um, and so I'm going to share some of those as we go along this morning and in this little series here, but uh, Luke chapter 8 beginning with verse 4. Let's read the parable first, uh, and then uh, we will uh, step into some things. Uh, it says, now, uh, and when a great multitude had gathered, they had come uh, to him, this is Jesus, from every city. He spoke by a parable. Now, let me just stop for a second, make sure you, you know that a parable, uh, about a third of the teachings that Jesus brought, he did it by parables. And parables are this. They are practical stories that have a spiritual meaning. So as we read this little practical story right here, uh, please understand, Jesus is not just telling stories. He is communicating a mystery of the kingdom of God. It is a spiritual principle. So uh, beginning with verse 5 now, is he so, so it says he spoke by a parable, verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Verse 6, some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Verse 8, but others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold, when he had said these things, uh, uh, things he cried, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who, that's an interesting say, statement. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now everybody there, un un unless they were physically deaf, had ears and they could hear. Listen, but not everybody could hear. You, you get what I'm saying? Every, everyone could physically hear the words, but not everybody could hear what Jesus was actually communicating, which is a mystery of the kingdom of God. That's what parables do. So he tells the stories, but not because, and then everybody could hear it, but not everybody heard it. Same thing happens in church. Everyone this morning within the sound of my, my voice will hear what we're talking about, but not everybody will hear. Amen. Not every, so, so we have to, the, we have to 
that's why we invite the Spirit of God to speak into our lives that we would, that we would hear from him. All right? So it's, it's spiritual meaning. Keep your finger there in Luke chapter 8, and, uh, and we're going to move here in a moment. But before we go and read the meaning of this parable of the sower, uh, I want to say something here, which is the first point I want to give you this morning, because this, this parable is a key to something. Man, I heard this confirmed even uh, by a preacher this week, uh, something here that uh, this, this parable is a key uh, to something. Actually, it's a key to two things. The first thing is that this parable is a key to the other parables. Mark chapter 4, let me read this to you. Mark chapter 4 um, is, is in Mark, it's the same parable. In the, in, the, uh, uh, in the Gospels, the parable of the sower shows up and is spoken in the other Gospels. Mark 4, where this uh, is spoken, the same parable. After he speaks it, listen to what Jesus says. But when he was alone, this is Jesus, those around him with the twelve asked about the parable. They wanted to know what it meant. And he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive. Hearing, they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Verse 13 then says, and he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? This parable is a key to the other parables. Watch this. This parable is a key to understand how the spreading of the seed of the word of God actually works. There's, there's something revealed here that gives us insight to every other parable that Jesus will speak and teach out of. This parable gives us an understanding right from the start to say this is how it works. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but you see, the, the, the seed is going to be spread. We'll read what it means in a moment. The, the seed, of course, is the word of God, but we'll read it in just a second. It falls on four different types of people. Watch this, 75% of the ones that it is sown on, nothing is produced. Ooh. Only 25%, the, the good soil, the, it produces anything. It, it reveals kind of a condition that exists. There will be lots of hearing, but there won't be, there won't be that kind of mass production because it's only those who have ears to hear. Sometimes because we check out when we're hearing. We don't really connect when we're hearing. We're, we're, our mind, listen, I don't, I don't know about you. Let's just be real for a moment because sometimes when I'm in church, my mind wanders. Come on, amen. Let's, can we, we can be real. My mind, you know, can go to something else, and I have to keep yoking it back. Amen. Sometimes my mind goes off to, man, I didn't get enough sleep, so let's just, let's just act like we're praying right now. Listen, listen, this is one of the things. You ever been in a church where, man, they turn off, everything's black, and they turn off all the lights? I, just, I, don't, I don't know about that, but listen, as a pastor, listen, I, you turn off all the lights and you say, well, everyone bow and close their eyes. Do you know what's about to happen? You best be a short-winded prayer because every, man, we're all just dozing. In and out. Woo. Listen, sometimes our mind wanders. Sometimes it takes effort to stay in the room. Amen. Going to dinner afterwards, or what's the football game, or what happened yesterday, and my goodness, what's she wearing that for, and all this sort of stuff that, that runs through our mind while we are in church. Is he almost done? Or I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things. No, I am not almost done. <laughs> Amen. In, in, case, in case you were like, whew, are we done? Like if you just kind of snapped in there, did he say we're done? No. So this is a mystery that reveals kind of how this works. Only 25% of the time it produces in, 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 within people because of, because of them being good soil. But see, this is the other thing that it's the key to. This is the, the first point is this, that this parable, the parable of the sower, is the key to bearing fruit. Let me say that again. This is the point one. It is the key. The parable of the sower is the key to bearing fruit. Luke chapter 8 
It's on the screen here. I'm going to read it out of two different versions. Now, this is where the parable of the sower is listed in Luke. At the end of it, Luke chapter 8, it, talking about the good ground, uh, first in the New King James Version, it says, but the ones that fell, this is the seed that fell on the good ground, are those having heard the word with a noble and a good heart, they keep it, come on, say keep it, and bear fruit with patience. Let me read uh, on the screen, will be also out of the NIV. This is one of the times the NIV kind of got it right, and it says, but the seed on the, the good soil stands for those with a noble and a good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, they produce a crop. Hear it. We all hear it, amen. Retain it takes effort, amen. This is why, and you, uh, I always encourage people to take notes. That's why there's a whole page on the back uh, for notes because sometimes if you're like me, man, I can be like, whoo, awesome. And by the time I get to the car, I'm like, whoo, what did he, what did we talk about? Amen, because, oh, so you're not going to say amen because your memory's wonderful. Listen, can I just say sometimes there's not fruit produced in the body of Christ because we don't remember it by tomorrow? And we don't remember it by tomorrow because we don't do the work to retain it. See, that's where we sit in our seats and we, listen, and, and we go off somewhere else. Listen, if your mind begins to wander, Bring it back. Speak to yourself. Say, hey, 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 come on back here. The seed of the word of God is being preached. If you, if you, if you begin to doze off, stand up. If you've noticed, I'm not going to fall asleep. You want to know why? Because I'm standing up. If you fall asleep during your devotions, here's a trick. You ready? Here's a pro tip. You ready? Stand up. Don't do your devotions laying in bed. Or sitting in the lazy boy chair, amen. Stand up, walk around, stay engaged, deal with yourself however you got to deal with you, amen. Take some notes. Okay. Let me come on back to that right there. Take some notes, why? So tomorrow... You remember what we talked about. Because you just asked the Spirit of God to change you by his word. So he's going to speak to you into your life. Amen. Write it down. So tomorrow you can pull it back out and go, ooh. Hey, Spirit of God, take that further. Listen, he will talk. He will speak. He will show you some things. And if you are, if you are counting on your memory... Now, some of you young folk don't understand this, but everyone else in the room, you understand what's happening, don't you? The older we get, it's like, uh, what, what, yeah, why'd we walk into the room? Exactly. So, so, right, see, it takes a little work to keep your mind in the room. Write some things down. It'll force you to kind of be engaged. Those who hear it, those who retain it and persevere in it, they will produce the crop. That's why it's only 25% of the time. Because it takes effort to retain the word of God. And so we all hear it. It says we all hear it. But, but uh, here in, in New King James, it said keep it. Uh, uh, in Mark, it said uh, accept it. Uh, here's the, the meaning around is that when the seed of the word of God is sown into our life, man, we got to hold on to it and we got to put it into practice. We got to do it. We got to follow through. And this is often the missing link when it comes to bearing fruit. This is why the parable of the sower is the key to bearing fruit. Uh, it goes with James 1.22. If you know this, uh, you got your finger in James. Turn to James chapter 1. Keep your finger with Luke 8 if you are still got a, a, an actual Bible in your hands. Uh, Luke chapter 8. Keep your finger there, but slip over to James chapter 1. We know James 1.22 on the screen. It says, but be what? 
doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Sometimes, a, a lot of times as church folk, we, we deceive ourselves because we just think, I, I go to church, I ought to be growing in Christ. That's not how it works. Why, why have I not matured? Why am I not growing? Why am I not growing from glory to glory? Because that's the will of God, because we're, we're hearing it, yes. And so if we just think by hearing, I'm growing, that's not how it works. We got to be hearers and what? Doers of the word. Let's read another two verses with this. Verse 23. It says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Watch this, this analogy here. For, verse 24, for he observes himself, goes away, and he immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, I love that. God's word is the perfect law of liberty. Amen. God's word will produce liberty in your life if you apply it, if you do it, if you live it, if you go out of here and put it into practice, it will produce freedom. It will produce liberty. Verse 25 again, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a what? Doer of the work. A doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. This is the same, it's speaking the same thing as the parable of the sower, to be, to be a, a doer of the word. And the one who is a doer will be blessed in what he does. In other words, it will produce fruit, right? And so it, it uses this analogy and it says, uh, being just a hearer is like the one who looks into a mirror, amen. Hopefully we all looked in a mirror this morning, amen, yeah. And when you see something wrong in the mirror, how many of you, when you get up in the morning, there's something terribly wrong in the mirror? Amen. Man, you get in, it's like, man, that's not what I looked like when I went to bed. Right? <laughs> so you ever wonder, like, what in the world happened through the night? My wife hates the fact, but having no hair, can I tell you one of the best things about having no hair? When I wake up in the morning, baby, my hair looks exactly the same as when I went to bed. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I used to have beautiful hair. Ooh, it, was, it was feathered. How many of you remember back in the 80s, man, parted down the middle and feathered? It was long, it was beautiful, it was thick. Every, every barber I ever went to was like, wow, you got good hair. And I think I took a little pride in that because I, it got removed from me. But when you look in the mirror in the morning and there is something wrong, you best do something about it. Come on, fix your hair. Amen. If there is spinach in your teeth and you see it in the mirror, do you know what the next step is? Get the teeth, get the spinach out your teeth. This is the practical analogy saying, listen, the, the, the one who is just a hearer looks into the mirror, sees all of that, and just turns away and forgets what he looks like and didn't do anything about it. Walking around with spinach in their teeth, hair all a mess, and everybody's like, what in the world is your problem? And it, so, so he says, that's the forgetful hearer. But, the, but when we look into it, this word is to bend down and, and stare into intently the perfect law of liberty. Man, get right up close to the mirror and look it all over. It's like, you ever have one of those magnification mirrors where you get all close and like, woo? To be a doer, a doer of the work, he said, this one will be blessed in what he does. This is often the missing link when it comes to bearing fruit. And so as we deal in this series of this, because, man, it is his will 
that fruit would be produced and the year is almost over, but there is still time, but there has got to be the doing of the work that, that, that God is speaking to us in his word to be a doer. Let's finish the parable um, uh, this morning. You, you still have your finger, Luke chapter 8, flip back over there. Now let's, let's he, they're going to, ask, they ask him about it, and so Jesus is going to explain the spiritual meaning to the parable we just read. Now you may be familiar with this, but stay with me. Uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 11, now the parable is this. In other words, this is what it means. The seed is the word of God. So he's, it's, not a, just a, it's not a farming thing. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside. Now, there are four types of soil, and they represent four types of people. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes, and he takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So, and, and other, another uh, gospel says that they don't understand it. So the devil comes, and he takes it. Verse 13. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear... They receive the word with joy, These have, and they have no root, who believe for a while, and in the time of temptation they fall away. Now, verse 14, now the ones that fell among the thorns are those, when they have heard, they go out, they are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and they bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the, gro the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and a good heart, keep it. And bear fruit with patience. So we got the four types of people. The first is the seed that falls along the path. And it says because they do not understand it, and sometimes we don't understand it because we didn't, we're not putting in the work to engage, to retain it, so we're just catching bits and pieces of it. And so now we got to try and connect all the dots, and, and, and sometimes that's just our mind is elsewhere and all of that sort of stuff. We don't remember. And so uh, they don't understand it, and it says the devil, the, the enemy rep is what rep the birds represent. Come and steal the seed. Let me tell you one of the things about our trees out there. These these, these apples, man, you got introduced to an uninvited guest last week at the tailgate party. Those stinking yellow jackets. Now, they're not actually bees. They, here's what they're called. They, they are a, uh, um, they are a, uh, a social um, um, wasp. It's actually, within the description of that, they are a, a social wasp. That's why they showed up at the fellowship, because they are a social wasp. And those things love apples. And they will actually, man, we, we had some apples, and from the out, man, look at that apple. It's beautiful. We get up close to it realize bees are coming in and out, and we can have the skin of an apple perfectly hanging on a tree, and there's nothing inside. Because the bees went in, they looked for a weak spot in the skin. Yellow jackets are known by beekeepers as thieves. And they go, they took a opportunity in a weak spot and the bee made a little hole and went on in there left the shell come on can you catch spiritual significance here as I'm watching this happen with our trees and and then that thief goes in there and guts it and steals all the fruit but left the shell and doesn't it look pretty but there ain't nothing on the inside Man, the enemy of our soul. Listen, he can't steal your salvation, amen, but he's after your fruit. If he can steal your joy, baby, he will. If he can steal your peace, he will. If he can steal contentment, he will. If he can steal purpose, he will. So my wife... We don't spray anything toxic on those things. She's got a thing about that. So we've got organic sprays. I don't know about all that. I don't think the bees mind organic spray. I don't know. But she goes out there and on a regular basis spraying those things. Keep the 
the bees, the wasps, the yellow jackets away from the fruit. I'll tell you the truth. It is a regular thing. Child of God, we get saved and we begin to apply the word. But let me, let me just help us remember there is an enemy and he's out to steal from you. And you're going, it's, you see, it involves effort to drive him off. We have been given authority in the name of Jesus. And if the enemy is, is in your house trying to steal fruit, trying to steal joy and peace and contentment and purpose, then listen, child of God, you don't have to call the pastor. You can run the enemy out of your house because God is no respecter of persons. And if you are his child, then you have been given the authority of the name of Jesus. But you've got to rise up and say, no more, no way. In the name of Jesus, I revoke the right, the enemy you think you've got to me and my house or household, and I say no in Jesus' name, Woo. and drive him out of your house, amen. Exercise the authority that you have been given, but, come on, say but, if you're going to go driving the enemy off, you need to shut the spiritual door he keeps coming through because it makes no sense to keep driving him off but leaving a spiritual door open through which he enters. You, you all should say amen right there. You can't leave a door of sin willingly open and then always be trying. Why is the enemy wreaking havoc in my life? The door is open. You know them stinking wasps will come right in our house if the door is open? things will come right into my office because there's a, there's a, my screen in my office, it, it doesn't quite go all the way to the top. And so the, they find the, the, that crack that I leave there and come on in. And whatever's in my office, baby, they're after. They're going to steal it. It's the same thing with the enemy of our soul. If you leave things open, if you leave it undealt with, if you carry unforgiveness and you will not deal with it, then you are inviting the yellow jackets into your house and they will steal every piece of fruit you got. Shut the door and then drive the enemy off. Amen. Man, we've been given authority, church. We don't, we don't have to be victims to the enemy. Sometimes we just need to get ticked off. Get ticked off and say, you know what, enemy, I'm tired of this. I am tired of it. Now, I realize I'm the one who gave you the right to be here. So right now, in Jesus' name, I sh we shut that door. In Jesus' name, now that's a practical thing. Shut the door. But then now I, I revoke the right that, that even I gave you to be here. And I say, no more. You are not welcome here any longer. Get out in the name of Jesus. That crazy yellow jacket will try again tomorrow. Come on in. People that, that, that don't understand. Oh, man, he's trying to steal... Peace. My goodness. I am not going to get through this today. It's all right. We'll just get as far as we get. I had this dream last night. And, uh, um, and I won't tell you all the details of it, but in the dream, there was this flood in this town. And I was trying to get somewhere in the town and uh, man, it was muddy and it was wet and going up and over all these things. And my whole night was traveling through this dream, through this town. And I, and I almost get to the destination and I look down and I realize I lost my shoes. You know how in a dream, it's a weird thing, but you know what it is? And I knew the spirit of God, that's, that's called peace. The shoes of the gospel of peace. And I lost my shoes. And so in the dream, I was like, well, I, I got to stop and turn around and go back and get them. Wherever I left them, wherever I lost it, wherever I laid it aside, go. Listen, this is what, this is what the rest of the dream was. Go back and get your shoes. Listen, if you have lost your peace, Christian, 
St stop, stop just kind of moving on without it. Stop what you're doing, go back where you lost it, and get your peace back. Get it back. Get your shoes back. Can I tell you, uh, uh, Jennifer, I'm so sorry for what I'm about to say. I do here. So watch. <laughs> you, know what, you know what shoes they were? How many of y'all have uh, like a favorite pair of sweats or a favorite pair of shoes? Man, I'll tell you what. I have a favorite pair of shoes. My wife hates them. They are, they are Crocs. Woo. How many of you, how many of you have Crocs? Come on, saved people, raise your hand. Oh, praise God. I love these shoes. My wife hates these shoes. Man, when I put, man, just even right now, it's like, ah. I got a friend, I, I got a friend who's a pastor. I'm so jealous of him because he preaches in Crocs. I threaten it every once in a while, and my wife's like, nope. I can't even, listen, I can't, I do, but I, I can't, you're not even supposed to go out the house with the Crocs on. You ain't going out like that, are you? Now, sometimes when I'm feeling sassy, I'll say, yes, I am. And other times, I'll go right back upstairs and put on some sneakers or shoes or whatever. But I went back, and in the dream, my Crocs were right there where I lost them. Man, and I put them babies on, and in the dream, I was like, whoo, peace. And he said, now turn around and continue on. Man, I'll tell you what, if you've lost your peace, go back. Listen, go back and get it. Listen, child of God, you don't have to put up with let me tell you how the enemy will mess with people. Condemnation. You don't deserve peace for what you did. Well, I know Christians are supposed to have joy, but listen, we all know what you did. So that's why you don't have it. Listen, by the power of the blood of Jesus, your guilty verdict is gone. Amen. There is now, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So go back and get your peace. Go back and get your joy. Go back and get your contentment. Because, listen, if you allow the Spirit of God, he'll probably show you where you lost it. There was an event, there was a storm, there was a happening, there was an encounter, there was a confrontation, and it was there you lost your peace, and you just moved on without it. Go back and get your peace, church. Go back and get your joy, church. You got to get it. Some fell on the rock. It says they had temporary joy. They were like, whoo, yes. Wow, that's just amazing. Yes, thank you, God. Listen, temporary. And it says then when temptation or trouble came, it, they fell away. Why? Because they had no root. Because they were just excited about it, but they didn't do anything with it. Now listen to me, because we just did that. Because if you sat there and you were like excited about, go get your peace, but you don't go get your peace. You just wasted your time. You deceived yourself right there. Whew. Go get it. Because it's yours, not because you deserve it, because you're so this or that. It's yours because he is peace. And your identity, come on, is in Christ. So it belongs to you because you are in Christ. Don't let the enemy lie to you. And put a stop to it. In Jesus' name. Some fell on the thorns. Again, received. These ones, it began to be put into, pra and put into practice and some things began to be produced. But then the thorns, it says the cares of this life, the pursuit of riches, the pleasures of life, all the distractions that come with life choke out the growth. That's how distraction works, man. We, it causes us to just step back and we lose our focus. 
And it chokes out what God has been producing as we have been applying the word of God. It says, it says, why does it happen? Because there was no mature root. But then there's the good soil. These are the ones that hear, retain, and do. And these are the ones, watch now, these are the ones that produce fruit. A harvest of righteousness. Real quick, turn to Galatians chapter 6. I'll try and end with, with, uh, with this point here. Galatians chapter 6, here we go. It says, do not be deceived. Verse 7. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he, So, we'll stop right there. Because the Spirit of God said we're to stop right there. Pick that up next time. Sometimes, because you just go right along with <laughs> what, you, what you have planned. And uh, the Spirit of God says, whoop. Step, step back here. We're not going to the second one today. We're just dealing with the first one today. So, why don't you stand to your feet this morning? Because the Spirit of God says there are those, because we, we can't. can't move forward without acting on, responding to the word of God where he says, get your peace back, your joy, your contentment, purpose, whatever it is, and I'll tell you the truth, if the enemy has been allowed to steal something, you know what it is right now. And the Spirit of God invites you to get it back. Power and the authority of the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. And this is as far as we're going to get, so uh, we'll, we'll pick up later, but right now, whatever that is, if that's you this morning, allow the Spirit of God to, if there's something that has been stolen from you, maybe it has to do with your marriage, maybe it has to do with finances, maybe it has to do with health, whatever it is, things that, that, that God has for his children, uh, th those things that, that the, even the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace, patience and kindness and goodness, gentleness, self-control, if some of these things you know full well, like the, the, those yellow jackets have gone in and are eating away. Now the shell is still there and you keep up the good look and you keep up. I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. I'm holding it together. How are you? I'm great. I'm blessed. All of that sort of stuff. Sometimes we keep the outer shell looking wonderful. But on the inside, 
It's being stolen. Listen, if you know that the Spirit of God would be speaking to you about one of those things, you just come to the front because we're just supposed to pray and we're supposed to take that back this morning. If there is something and you know the enemy's been stealing it from you, you just we're not going to take a whole lot of time. I'm not going to beg you to come. If you know what it is, you know what it is. So just come on up here and we're going to together take authority in the name of Jesus. We're going to drive off those yellow jackets. We're going to drive off the enemy who has been stealing from you. And we're going to get that back. And I will tell you that tomorrow the enemy keeps on trying. He is persistent. You wake up tomorrow and as you go through your day tomorrow, if you discover that the enemy is trying to get after it again, then you need to rise up in the name of Jesus and begin to take some authority. Drive him off in your household, whoever is the priest of your house. Man, I'll tell you, you drive the enemy out. Don't put up with it anymore. You are not a victim. You do not have to be a victim. The enemy is a liar. He is a squatter. He does not have the right unless he is given the right. So revoke it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask some of our leadership team that didn't come forward. You come. Just, just kind of stand behind people here. And I just want you just, you just kind of feel free to move up and down the line. You just kind of pray in agreement with them. And if you're here, then here's what we're going to do because this is something you have to do this morning. You have to do this. If you know what that thing is, if you know those, it, may, it could be, it, maybe it's more than one. But if you are fed up, you are fed up with having to live life without it. And the word of God tells you that it's yours because you're in Christ. Then we're going to take that back. Now listen, the spirit of God would also show you any open doors. Let me just tell you how this works. If you're holding unforgiveness, let me tell you what happens when you go outside the doors today. You're going to have to deal with that. Now we'll pray over it here, we'll confess it here, but out there, there's some, maybe some things that have to be done. And if we refuse those things, there's some sort of sin that's opened up. Man, we got, to, we got to get the door shut. We got to close the door. Holding on to bitterness, anger, unforgiveness. We're gonna have to close those doors or he comes right back in. That yellow jacket will come right back in. The Spirit of God would be showing you those things right now if you're listening. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he is showing you. That has to be dealt with. That has to be done. This has to be said. You have to go do this. Whatever it is, to come on, just have the attitude that says, yes, Lord. He's not trying to ruin anything. He's not trying to do something uh, that, that's just going to harm you. Listen, he's trying to bless you. He's trying to remove something that has been hindering your growth, your maturity, and fruit bearing. It is God's will that you bear much fruit. It is God's will that you stand steadfast and immovable. It is for your good that he would identify things. It is not for condemnation's sake. So we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, if you're here at the altar, if, if, if you're knowing what that is, just, just say that out of your mouth. Say, yes, Lord. Listen, if you don't know what it is, say, yes, Lord, anyway. Because he's going to reveal it to you, and our answer needs to be yes, even if we don't know for sure what it is yet. God, if you say close it, if you say get rid of it, if you say that stops now, if it, then my answer is yes. Yes, Lord. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray together all at the same time. He is a big enough God. He hears all of us. Amen. Amen. With our leadership team and others that are sitting there, I want you to begin to pray for and intercede for these up here. You don't have to know their business. You don't need to know what's going on with them. You just need to know that a brother and sister in Christ is dealing with something, and so we intercede for them. 
Amen. We had some practice in intercession at the end of worship this morning, so we're going to step right back into that. Would you go to war for these ones here on their behalf in Jesus' name? Begin to, we're just going to begin to pray. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray out loud. Amen. We're going we're gonna to open our mouths because the enemy always wants us quiet because we're embarrassed. Man, we're talking to the king. Man, there ain't nothing to be embarrassed of. Listen, you get to talk to the king of kings. You get to talk to the creator of the universe. So we come. So here's what people at the front. We're going to begin to pray, and I want you to lift up your voice also. Whatever is coming to you to pray, whatever is coming to you, but you're going to have to declare. You're going to have to speak, and I'm going to be praying. You just come right along with us. Everyone else, you lift up your voices on their behalf as well. So come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just begin to lift up these things right now, things that have been stolen from us in Jesus' name, and we come in the name and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is the one true and living God, the one who is now seated at the right hand of the Father, and he is interceding for me right now in Jesus' name. I come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we say no more to you, enemy. We say no more. We say we revoke the right that we have given you, whoever gave it, even if it was me, we revoke any right that we have given you to come into our life and to steal things that belong to us because I'm a child of God. And so we say no in Jesus' name. Enemy, I command you to leave and leave us well in Jesus' name. You will leave and you will leave us well. You will not touch anyone or anything as you go right now. You are not welcome here. You're not welcome on this property. You are not welcome at my house. You are not welcome at my job. You are not welcome in my life. You are not welcome in my health. You are not welcome in my finances. You are not welcome in, 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 my, in my marriage. You are not welcome in my relationships in Jesus' name. I say no to you in Jesus' name. And we take back, God, we just, in Jesus' name, though we have no authority on our own. But we take back in Jesus' name, God, what you have already purchased for us, what you have given us. We take back joy. Come on, if you've lost your joy, just say, I take back joy right now in Jesus' name. If you've lost your peace, say, in Jesus' name, I, I take back peace, not temporary counterfeit peace, but I take the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace. I take that in Jesus' name. Contentment, I take it back. Uh, uh, purpose, I take it back. Whatever it is that you have lost, let, you, let it come out of your mouth. I take it back in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I do not receive any condemnation from the enemy who says I don't deserve it and I've messed up too much. I say, I say that, that, that may be true in our mind, but because of the blood of Jesus, I am free. I have no condemnation. Because of the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven and declared not guilty in Jesus' name. And so, God, I receive back the peace that you have for me in Jesus' name. Come on, say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, we're going we're gonna to sing a different song, Boaz, if you want to get it ready. Somebody to help you with that. We're going to do Enemies Camp here in just a minute or two. It's the Enemies Camp medley we're going to do. Now listen, if you're here, because we come, we confess, and the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. But confession and repentance are two different things. Repentance now means that I will go and do uh, 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 the other thing. I will turn around and go the other way. Repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of behavior. It's not just something we do, kind of a spiritual go through at church, and then we go out and continue like we've always been. There's got to be some change. Now, the Spirit of God promises grace to you. Woo. He says, I will help you. You are not on your own. I am in the boat with you. So he says, I will give you grace. Listen, 
there are some things that need to be dealt with today. For every day you leave this undone, it's one day closer to where you get to the place you forget and you just don't follow through. So be aggressive. Go deal with it. Now don't set it up in your mind how it's all going to turn out, especially if you're dealing with somebody else. It's just because the Spirit of God's been dealing with you doesn't mean necessarily that they're just, it's all going to be wonderful. But if there's someone or something that has to be dealt with, then deal with it. If there are some words that need to be said, then say, say them. For somebody, it goes like this. Please forgive me. I was wrong. Do not add the word but. Please forgive me for what I said, how I acted, how I responded. Please forgive me. For others, it's, a, it's a asking forgiveness even for curse that has been spoken, words that have been said. And then we begin to be blessers. You were called to be a blesser, not a curser. So we confess, amen, and then we repent. And we turn and we go the other way. Tomorrow morning, when you get up and get in the word, when you get up and get in the word, get filled up. Go through your day tomorrow, man. When you, the enemy's trying to mess with your mind or bring you this or bring you that, man, just take authority. You can do that at work. You don't have to get loud and stand up on a table. You can just deal with it right then, right there. Enemy, no way. In Jesus' name, I say no. You find he begins to mess in your house, rise up in authority and say, uh-uh, not happening here in Jesus' name. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your word. The seed of the word of God that brings life. We want to be the good soil who hears your word, retains it, and then go do goes and does it. And you promise that if we will hear, retain, and do, that it will produce a harvest of righteousness. Fruit will be produced in you. In Jesus' name. Watch, blessing will come to your marriage. Doesn't mean perfect, but blessing comes. It removes the hindrance. Blessing comes, even that relationship with your coworker. In Jesus' name, go after your peace. So, Lord, we receive that. We take that back in the name, in the authority of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to, if you are able, I'm going to ask you to stay here at the altar. Everyone else is standing to your feet. We're going to go out of here with some. Uh, some uh, warfare kind of praise. And uh, it's this, this old thing we used to sing, the enemy. I went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole from me. Now listen, this is not in our own strength. This is in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the one who gives us the victory, church. Amen. Don't get it twisted. And then by faith, we're going we're gonna, to, it goes right into, can you believe what the Lord has done in me? And then by faith, even before we see it with our eyes, it says, look what the Lord has done. Amen. Come on. Go ahead. We're going to sing this song. It's all right to be happy in church. 